going live. We're, We're live. live. <laughs> we always say that. Nobody's watching. Hello, everyone who's not here yet. <laughs> yep. Pe people are coming. Fix our let, hair. let me get my hair right. <laughs> Sleep out of my honey, eyes. honey, honey. <laughs> Focus. It is Thursday afternoon evening. We just got a lightning warning five miles away, but now the sun is back out. We have had extremely hot, hot, hot weather. Hell Green Gables. Um, probably some of the hottest weather we've had all summer. Yeah, it's been up there. And That's tomorrow sure. it's only going to be in the 80s and the next day in the 60s. So, yay. <laughs> we'll go from roasting with the air conditioner to putting the fireplace on. <laughs> We're ready. Hi, Christine. Always chirping. You have not been here for a while. That's nice to see you. Hello, Eric. Missouri is hot. Wow. It has been hot this week hot 90s and humid yep. and we just really have been blessed because we just haven't had that tremendous amount yeah just little bits and pieces of it so anyway that's the weather that's the weather for you you know when you don't know what to talk about you talk about the weather we do have a list actually i do we're just kind of waiting for people to gather we get people it's probably time to start talking uh, i am talking oh <laughs> that's right you are I'm getting a haircut tomorrow. I'm so excited. You know when you need a haircut, when you wash it, you fix it, and an hour later it looks bad. It's like time. I never think it looks bad. I know. You're so nice. Renee, it's hot here in Tennessee. I bet it is. High, high humidity. Um, yeah, it's the humidity. That's just, I woke up this morning and I'm like... Wow, uh, sweating already? It's <laughs> This is not a good start. We don't sleep with our air conditioner on. We have a very cool bedroom. It's one way we really keep our electric bill down. But the really humidity down. was just yeah, there. It was hot. It was hot. Yeah. So are we planning on coming to the Homesteaders of oh, America? We're, we're there. Yes. yes. And we... Um, Ordered T-shirts for us. This year, they're going to be a light gray. Yep. Um, we can't show them until just before because we're having them shipped to my brother's house just because I'm like, it said probably would be here by October 2nd. And I'm like, yeah, we're leaving on the 4th. <laughs> so we're headed to their place a week early. So we'll get up there too. Um Ethan, Marianne, we're all our good friends. And Christine, you are stuck in Chattanooga where it's very hot. Okay. Um, Marianne says, we have had some cooler days, but it is like yours now. Yes. Yeah, Except just... for the humidity. <gasps> Lois is on. Oh, Yay, Lois. she lives in Canada, so it's cooler there. <laughs> oh, maybe not. No, she says. It's oh, cooler. okay. Good. Howdy, long time since she caught up. Mary Cleveland, thank you so much. We've got a great audience. For those of you who are going to be at the Homesteaders of America Conference, we are going to be there. And it sounds like we're going to have some evening uh, fun because there are multiple people we know who are going to be camping as a campsite. We're camping at Goonie Campsite, and we're going to meet together. Anybody that knows us, loves us, wants to know us, wants to love us, Come to that campsite in the evening. We'll have a we big meetup. We don't know what they have going on there. It may not work, but uh, I'm sure it will. Well, they had a list of people who were going. Yeah. I know the Holler family is staying there and a long list of others. So. Yeah. It's cool. Um, oh, those tacos sure look good. Oh, I, and ha having the one of them that ate them, they were very good. <laughs> they were very good. So I have been prepping myself for what we need to start doing soon, but definitely come wintertime for our elderberries that we plan to grow. Uh, we're going to need to get some cuttings. And I'm learning that there are at least three different opinions about when you cut them. How you cut them seems to be, and how you get them started, 
there's a lot of agreement there, but as far as when they should be cut, there's some variation. So I'm learning that, but also about how to get them started. We're really excited to get our patch up and going. Uh, and what do they call it? It's not a patch. Some people call it a patch. What do you want to call it? I, I want to call it the right name. Oh. I'm going to find it out. I'll call it. So a patch. we're moving in that direction. It, this first year, we're not going to have a big one. We're, we're going well, to experiment. Because we, we are such believers of what elderberry juice does for the body. <laughs> it has just helped us so much. So anyway. Um, so we got something new this week. We're going to make a blog about it that will probably come out either probably Friday morning. Um, oh, he's going to go get show you get me one i'll just wait till he gets back <laughs> do, 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 do. well we've been we're about three or four weeks late on what we wanted to do um but just with everything else that we've been doing we ordered more chickies these are our Delawares, and if you ever watched our old videos when we were still in Oregon and we would walk away and all of the white chickens would follow us, that's what Delawares are. They're our favorite chicken. They're wonderful layers, super friendly with children, um, and these are all females, and they're a day old. They were born yesterday. Yesterday morning. And they're doing quite amazing. So we're very excited to we, have We got them from Cackle Hatchery, which is... In well, Lebanon, Missouri. Two towns over from us. Yeah. So I had expected a lot bigger operation than what we Well, it's a block big. Yeah. We yeah. just saw the store. Anyway, not bantams. No, we finally got rid of our bantams. <laughs> not, not in a bad way. I mean, they're still living. <laughs> we sold them. Um, and... Ironically enough, when Murray McMurray sent us our Red Rangers, they sent three surprises, one of which is a Banta. They warned us that they were sending surprises, and they wouldn't know what. So what I suspect they do is if they have an overhatch on certain varieties, that they include those so that they don't just have them sitting around. I just have to say hi to Janet. She just joined. Ah, okay. So we have three surprises. So, yes, but one of them is a bantam. We're pretty so sure now, it is small, And what small, you need small. to understand is we ordered all roosters. So I caught one chasing this little bantam around the other day. So we're like, okay, where do we put this one bantam? With Hanny Penny. With Hanny Penny. <laughs> Who's still going strong, by the way. And Lane. We think. Well, hon, who else would lay there? Uh, I don't know. There's been some odd things happening. Um, oh, Marianne says she used to have, have Delawares. Yeah. yeah. We loved them. In fact, that's my tear jerky video in Oregon when we had to say goodbye to our Delawares. And he just barely said, it's so nice to know that we put ourselves into a situation where we don't have to say goodbye to them. Old age sets in. For us or them. For us or them. <laughs> Whichever comes first. So we'll make a little video. We made a little video about the chicks that we'll put out yeah. on Saturday. We we don't know what our current laying hens are going to continue to do. You know, we know they're a little older. Um, we know they'll stop during the winter. And that's maybe. why we had wanted the Delawares earlier so that they would start in December when these others yeah, stop. So they, they would be pullets and they'd get off and we've had good success in getting chickens to start laying at that time. They don't seem to taper off during the winter. Yeah. They just so start. These they don't start, know. They these little, little ones will start in February, which is a nice time to be able to yeah. get chickens. So we'll see. With elderberry stop Will elderberry stop a cold that's starting to hit me right now? Absolutely. It's been our experience. I had even going as an ear infection that first day I could tell, oh, this is hitting me really hard. Illness is all around us. I took four tablespoons during the day, you know. During you know the which is hour. way beyond our normal yeah. one tablespoon a Usually day. Usually just do one tablespoon a day, but I did four tablespoons and it was gone. And then during the week, I took a few more. 
Um, yeah. Seriously, I, I can't even believe it. But don't do syrup. Syrup is for pancakes yeah. and juice is for medicine. I mean, you're going to get some benefit out of it, I suppose. But you get all the sugar, too. So Now, if you have a really compromised immune system, it may be tougher to do so. Have its antioxidant effect and, and do what it's good at doing. But. Wait, you're looking at two people who didn't even know what elderberries were a year ago. In fact, when we were at the Mother Earth News Fair in Oregon in August, we actually, I think it was Terry's. Not this August, but. A year ago, August. I think it probably was Terry's. Could have been. Um, booth. And we stayed away from it on purpose. We're like, ah. Weird, weird stuff. Weird stuff. We don't need to go there. <laughs> but, you know, at this point, we... Now we're convinced. People around us have had colds uh, a lot, and we find, we get the symptoms. We've had them two or three times now, and we start up in the elderberry juice. Symptoms go away. So... Yeah. Uh, we're believers. <laughs> believers. We're believers until proven different. And so far, glass, it's good. Okay, our next subject. You saw our video, if you saw our video, when we were sitting on the floor with another big hole in the floor. Um, the chat just went away. There we go. Um, oh, wait, let me read what Lois says. My hands were free-ranging up until four days ago. Now they are pinned up and have gone on strike went from 20 eggs to four. So did they go on strike after you pinned them up? Oh yeah, that, that'd be a big Renee change. said they sell it at the family owned pharmacy here. That's great, but it's expensive. Wow. Oh no, no, no. It's $30 a bottle for 11 ounces. It, it's very expensive. But uh, it's so much worth it to me. So who's asking about? The critters, okay. So let me talk about the critters. It's amazing. It's amazing. Okay, Marianne says elderberry is amazing too. Yeah. Um, so you saw the video where we were sitting on the living room floor with the hole behind us. So it got fixed that night, very temporary, uh, but long enough that we don't have to work on it for several months if we don't get to yeah. it. Yeah. It's completely sealed. There are no critters. The critter population in our home have decreased significantly. Um, as Jim swatted a huge spider yesterday. <laughs> Spiders are tough. Spiders are tough. I sprayed them once and they just roll up in a ball and then take off again. I'm like, what the world? Um, anyway, so things are better as far as the critters go. Brenda feels a little more comfortable. And you don't. Because you you know they're going to get me no matter what. No, I know I know they're they're less likely to get in. So, um, hello, Christine Betts. Nice to have you aboard. We um, have a question. It's the question on the title. I want to see who can answer it. What is the telltale sign that you have a mouse in the house? If you have a dog, we'll see what you come up with. And and to Lois, you know, we actually had was it late last week? At some point we, um, yeah, it was Saturday. Saturday night, I was at a oh, at, yeah. at a at an event, and I got home after dark. And Rinda is not one who's going to go out into the dark by herself. So the the chicken door hadn't been shut on their shelter. Um, everybody else was safe and sound, but they weren't. And so as I went to shut it, there were only four hens in there and they were sitting all the way to the back, which usually they're sitting all the way to the and front. Their and, 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 and their dog food was not in there. And their food. Bird food was knocked over. Yeah, it was knocked over. So, you know, first thing I can think of, hey, something's been in here, scared them. And I actually, as we drove in the driveway, had seen eyes out in the little field. The, where we acquired driveway. And so, you know, first thought, something's been in and gotten them. So we start looking and we, we gave up. Yeah, we gave up, but we, we found all but two of them. We found three huddled over by the garage and we were able to get those in. And then we just, we walked the whole property practically. Yeah. We couldn't find them. So 
We said an extra prayer for those two that were out. And the next morning when we raised the garage, there they were. They were out and about, which is great. The two days later, our egg Pop. supply, supply drop. dropped way off. So okay. they were pretty freaked out. I got to read this. So we have barking. They get the dog food, barking. He will sniff corners and be alert and listening. Droppings. The dog will seek it out and chase it. My dog was trying to get behind the stove. Um, my Maggie goes rooting and tries digging. And the dog will sniff them out. And the dog food, if they have a pet, will be missing. This is... I wish our dog would sniff them out. He loves to sniff things. Doesn't do it with mice. Doesn't alert on them. Doesn't try to do anything about them. I think they would probably sleep with him. The answer for us is the dog food. We find piles of dog food in shoes. This is from Oregon. In shoes, in the back of the stove, in bags, in clothes. Um, not, yeah, in drawers. Shoes was the big thing. Shoes, Shoes we was had the big thing. The, the one that really it, it didn't surprise me, but it was like upsetting is when we moved the bookcases, when we were moving, I mean, you never move a bookcase otherwise, right? But back in behind underneath the bookcase was a lot of dog food. So Oliver had not been eating as much as we thought he was. <laughs> let me let me say hi for a minute. Um, I can't see it really close. And our and Rubio uh, from Aurora. Oh, okay. Missouri, down, just down the road. That's very close. Um, anyway, dog food is something they haul away and hoard. So let me tell you why I'm bringing that up. Because you know we had critters, and I walked out one morning when we had the kitchen floor open, and there was one in the opening of the kitchen floor. And he saw me and the other way, and then I started to walk away, and he started to come back and the other way. <laughs> So while um, Meg and Ben Holler were here, um, I have a little island that's a temporary island in my kitchen. And one of the shelves had fallen down because it only had three pegs. So she, the incredible person that she is, went and got a screw and screwed it in and put my shelf up, cleaned out the whole thing, put all my stuff in there. So today I pull out the wheat grinder to make some, to grind some wheat. And behind it is all of this dog food that has just been there since the haulers left. Now, I've cleaned it all up. So I am in my heart of hearts believing that since everything is sealed, we're not going to have them again. But that's not completely true because there's still a hole under the kitchen sink. <laughs> so we'll see if they come back. But dog food hoarded in different places is our first sign that we have a mouse. All right, let me catch up. Yeah, we do need to seal under the sink. That's yeah. That's another one of the jobs that we've done. Okay, let's see. The mouse moves the food. Yeah. yeah. Lawrence has trapped three mice in the last three days. Good for Lawrence. Send him back here to me. Yeah, we could use him. Get a cat. And absolutely, we had mice so bad in Utah when we lived there on our little farm. And we, I don't know why we haven't gotten mouse a uh, cat yet. When we get back from the conference... We keep postponing it. When we get back from the conference, we're going to get a cat. Because they they took care of that, I'm sure. They just took care of it. So Mary Cleveland is in Missouri, too, in McDonald County. Um, you keep the dog food in a container. No, no, no. We no, keep no, it in is, a container. This is the this dog is taken bowl. right out of the bowl. Um, because, yeah, his food is completely sealed. Um, so nobody else can get to it. Uh, keep it in a metal can. Yep. Uh, side note, chickens love the mice. That's true. That is true. Sort except of true. for that, not our Delawares did it. Well, they haven't ever really seen one. But They've the Rhode run. Islands did. <laughs> yeah. But these ones, these will eat anything. If, we uh, throw it down, if they it just, moves, it's snatched. Yeah. yeah. Um, put steel wool in the hole. If it's not too big, mice are moving in doors now okay well okay. under the sink it's like this big still yeah we, we so need that's a lot of right steel wool up. yeah we we need to put a board in there and you go turn the stove off okay i smell dinner <laughs> ah. so 
That's a bold mouse. Yes, it is. Um, Marianne says, we had a beagle dog and it was much better mouser than the cat. <laughs> Some dogs are. We kept our cats in the little barn that we had our chickens adjacent to with all the feed. And so when the mice would come in to try to get the feed, the cats lived there and they would just get them. We'd see occasionally one of the smaller cats playing with a mouse, but we didn't see any Um, hi from Texas. Hello, Francis. Welcome. Um, I have handed, Christine says, I have handled 120 pounds snarling dogs before, but scream, but scream if I see a mouse. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I hate them. <laughs> and not as much as I used to, but they just, you know, whatever. Want to give a really quick update on our green beans. We're going to do a put them in the video for Saturday just to show you. But this little raised garden that we have with the bricks and the boards going around it that's covered with uh, and the drip system, the drip runs system consistently. I've never seen green beans like this, they're wonderful. Well, the plants are, we're hoping for beans to start well, showing. Got up. All these they're ready, beans. they're close. Yeah, so. Really excited about that. The other chicks are doing amazing, amazing, amazing. They're, they're growing a lot. They're two and a half weeks old. Well, two weeks and two days. So, um, But what we're doing is cleaning up and we're going to, we have that lime stuff that we put on the walls before. We're cleaning up where the bantams were with that run. And we'll be moving them into there with all new, um, Chips. Yeah, instead chips. of putting them into the chicken tractors, which aren't quite quite ready, it'll be ready. It'll be about two weeks before they get in there. Yeah, we, we had to order some of the, well, the hardware wire. We couldn't buy what we And needed. the white tarps. And the white tarps. Yeah. So, but because we're going to be gone, and instead of having people come over and move them around and not have watching over them all day long, like we'll be able to do when we're here, <laughs> we're going to opt to put them into the chicken coop with, with the enclosed run. run to keep them safe. They'll be safe. They're just little. Um, they probably be. won't try to go outside by the way. Right. We'll see. We'll see. You never know. Nope. Never know. And then the last thing we have to talk about is we have a, a nice wheat mill. It's a hand crank. It's got a container about this big. We got it at Bob's Red Mill. Uh, we did it on purpose in getting a hand crank one because we wanted to be able to make sure we had the ability to grind our grains if we didn't have electricity. However, when we do have electricity, we think we'd like to have one that actually works. And I was hoping that Trish from Willow Creek was on here because I watched her one day open up her thing. The one she has works really her grain well. And just, shh, and I went, in the meantime, I've got my einkorn in there, and I'm grinding away, and then he grinds away, and then I grind away, and then he grinds away. <laughs> because I'm making uh, for the last meal of my hundred, my uh, 12 weeks to hardiness, we will have 60 recipes done. I'm making the last one tomorrow, and it's a pizza, but I didn't want to use bad wheat or um, what's the wheat, the flour that everybody who's gluten free uses? Cassava. Cassava? Anyway, I don't love that. And so, um, anyway, I am using the einkorn flour, which has one, the protein, it's missing that protein that makes it really hard to digest. So, if you're gluten sensitive, you can use it. If you have celiac disease, you still can't use it. So anyway, we are making a pizza, a very thin pizza dough out of einkorn flour tomorrow for our last meal. And so we're grinding. So the question is, if any of you have electric ones, what do you have and do you like them? So, and why do you like them? Why? <laughs> so electric grinders, that's what I want to 
Um, that would be electric brain mills. Electric brain mills, yes. And while you're putting that there, just want to retell the story if we haven't told it. When we went up to Nauvoo, Illinois to visit our granddaughter and our children in July, it, they have a lot of old pioneer reenactments there. And they had a lady there who was showing how to make candles out of tallow, which I had no idea you could make them out of tallow instead of wax. So that's a really cool subject of something we're going to be doing. But the other thing is, is that she told us, we were talking about the heat in our garden, and she was from Texas. And she said that during tech in Texas, they can't grow their green beans. I think we've already told them this. But because she told us that she grows them in the fall, that's why we tried it. And we are so grateful for this person. It's working very well. Because our garden is beautiful. So, um, hello, Deer Park Farmstead. Welcome. We're trying to find out if anybody uses electric mills. Tell us what you use. Um, even after we've gone off, if you have an, a good electric mill and you love it, let us know what it is because we're going to be in the market for one. Because <laughs> I realize that's what stops me from making our homemade stuff more often than not. Because not that I don't need it, but anyway. <laughs> so I guess nobody on here has one. So if you come to this later and you see that question, Yes. Let us know. We're thinking, we're looking. Yeah. Well, we appreciate everybody coming on today. It's been a very large group today, and we're really excited about that. We've got three minutes left. Okay. And uh, we are right now prepping to increase the number of raised beds we have. There, uh, Rinda actually has some starts that she has going so that we can put them into the raised beds. Spinach. Bed. And I did it by putting them in the freezer for two weeks or a month, yeah. the seeds, and then they sprouted, poof, they, really sprouted they just well. came right up, and they never come up like that. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Anyway, we're going to create two more uh, beds and then take our 50-foot bed and take a portion of it and get it ready to plant some things. We're doing, we're getting the drip tape. Uh, we don't have all the pieces and parts, and we're ordering them. And then we'll show everybody how we're putting that together for those three beds. Oh, so Marianne, we'll check out what the next name. She uses Whisper Mill. It's out of business, but she says she thinks it's still made with a different name. I wanted to answer Mary. She wants to know how we're liking Missouri. We love Missouri. Yeah, we're really liking Missouri. We have no complaints about Missouri. Yeah, for instance, yesterday when we went to pick up the chicks, we went from where we are in Bolivar to Lebanon, the Hackle Hatcheries in Lebanon, and because we needed to pick up some things that were in, we haven't been able to find them other places. We went from the, the, the interstate goes from Lebanon to Springfield. So it was kind of a triangular circle for us and beautiful drive, just farms, green, just pretty nice. I need to answer Francis. Okay. Francis wants to know why we put the seeds in the freezer. I read somewhere that and it's not just any seed this happened to be for the spinach, spinach for the spinach seeds they need it to be cold and if you put them in for at least two weeks we're told it tricks them and so you can plant them and they will grow much better and i have never had spinach seeds come up so there, there are a lot of varieties of plants that need think there's been winter time before they sprout apparently uh, so you trick them by putting them in the refrigerator into the freezer. They think it's been winter for a while, and they you warm them up, and they think it's springtime. Ethan has to run and check because he thinks he has coyotes trying to get his chickens. Oh, uh, see us at oh, we'll see you at the campground. Yeah, and um, your Marianne's daughter just bought one. Our someday some of my exposed crops got frozen. <gasps> Where are you at, Deer Park? Wow. It's cold already where you're at. Frozen. Frozen. Frozen's not happening around here yet. <laughs> wow. All right. We have people leaving, and we appreciate everybody coming. 
And I'm going to stay on long enough for a dear part to answer me. Blue bonnets require the same. Okay. There you go. So there are a lot of them that do. Anyway, all I know is I saw that it needed to be happening. I tried it. It worked amazing. Um, yeah, Marianne, try it with your spinach seeds. Uh, it, it's really good. We, we will be putting uh, covers over all of our garden. We grew them all during the winter in Oregon and in Utah mm -hmm. in really, really, really cold weather. I mean, not Utah. everything grows, but cold weather your crops. Spinach one, well. your, it grows amazing. Spinach, chard, I mean, it, it Really, during late December and through into however long it stays cold, uh, it stops growing, but it stayed green the whole time. And as soon as it warmed up, it took off. So, uh, you know, we've heard that. We've seen a lot of people say that, but even when we were so yeah. cold in Utah. But we are going to go cover our green beans because we don't want to lose them. And yeah. if yeah. it's going to drop, we want to be ready. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Love you all. Take we care. appreciate the support. Bye-bye.